My name is Chris Yi, and I'm making a 3D puzzle platformer called Nectar. In the game, you play as a potted sunflower with its bumblebee companion, using Nectar to grow plants, solve puzzles, and manipulate the world. Now it's been a while since I've posted a video, and I've been working on a lot of different things, but in this video I want to specifically focus on the camera in Nectar. So I was inspired by a GDC talk that I saw from someone at that game company. That's the company that worked on Journey, and he gave a lot of tips for how to make a more dynamic camera. I'll put a link to his talk down in the description. His philosophy included two different points. One, the camera should be invisible. So a good camera is one that you don't notice, and if you do notice it, that means that something weird happened to make you notice it. And that pulled you out of the experience and made you focus on the camera instead of other parts of the game. Things that would pull you out are things like clipping, or sudden jumps in the camera, or if the camera is like fighting against your control. Those are all bad things that pull you out. And his second point was that the camera should try to anticipate what the player wants to do, and then it should just do it for them. So while a camera that doesn't react to the player could be fully functional and work just fine, it might feel clunky or cumbersome to control. So I wanted to try to implement these two points into my game as best I could, trying to mimic what he did in Journey, but then also taking my own twist on that and making it work for my own game. Now disclaimer before I get started, all of these tricks that I'm using require a bunch of different raycasts, and I'm aware of the inherent performance hit that these might cause, but I believe the trade-off is worth it. Comparing them side by side with none of these tricks implemented versus all of them implemented, it was clear to me that this dynamic camera system feels way better, so I'm going to stick with it for now. I will try to optimize it in the future. Maybe I can get it working a little better, but I think it feels pretty good right now. So getting into it. In one of my very early devlogs, I already covered what the camera is doing when you jump, where it doesn't follow the player when you jump, it stays put until you land on something higher. Um, that's still happening. And then I also covered an auto-turning feature where the camera automatically turns in the direction that you are running. So both of these things are still happening, but I added things onto those. So the first thing was adjusting the yaw to avoid obstacles. So normally if you run behind an obstacle, the camera will just snap in front of the obstacle so it doesn't clip through and so that you're not obscured by the obstacle. But this is very jarring because the movement is very sudden. Uh, you just jump forward and I want to avoid that. So what I'm doing is I'm casting a bunch of rays to the side of the player and if they detect an obstacle, then the camera will automatically turn away from that obstacle. So theoretically, if you have a bunch of different things that you're running around and you don't touch the camera at all, the camera should adjust through it automatically. And then I do a cast backwards so that if you're backing into a corner, the system just turns off so you don't get stuck in a loop trying to move back and forth within the corner. And then to make the transition a little smoother, when you are running along the side of a wall, I have a different system that detects the walls there and it gradually moves you away from the wall so that the camera isn't right next to the wall. Now in addition to adjusting the yaw of the camera, I also adjust the pitch of the camera. So I do some casts in front of the player just to get the average height of the terrain in front of the player. And I use this to detect ledges. So if there's a ledge in front of the player, it'll detect it and it will point the camera downward depending on how far the drop is. So if you walk up to a ledge and it's a ledge that you're probably gonna jump off of, then the camera points downwards to point you towards where you're jumping so you can see where you're gonna jump. And it just gives the player a better view from higher vantage points. So that's the yaw on the pitch of the camera. I already talked about the auto turn of the camera when you're running sideways, but it's also doing something else when you're running sideways. I added a look ahead feature so that the camera detects which direction you're running, and then it shifts the camera position in that direction so that the player is no longer the center of the camera. The center of the camera is actually in the direction that you're running, and you can see more of where you're running. This actually wasn't talked about in the GDC talk. I got the idea for this system in Mario Odyssey, which does the same thing. When Mario is running one direction, the camera points in that direction so that you can see in front of him. And uh, when you're running forwards, it recenters, and I'm doing the same thing in mine. And it just helps you better see the destination that you're running towards. So those are obstacle avoidance, uh, moving the camera when you're running, things like that. I'm also moving the camera in and out towards 
or away from the player, depending on a few different things. So the first thing is I adjust it based on the camera angle. So normally if the player looks up, the camera would swing downwards and it would hit the ground, and then hitting the ground would cause it to zoom in uh, suddenly. And I want to avoid that. So in my system, when the player looks up, the camera actually gradually moves towards the player instead of hitting the ground and then moving in. And the camera actually never hits the ground. This just makes the movement more gradual and fluid, so you don't get the sudden hitting of the ground. And then I do the opposite when you point the camera downwards. So if you point downwards, the camera zooms out and you get a zoomed out top-down view of your surroundings. You just get a better sense of everything around you. And then in addition to that, I do some casts behind the camera that detect walls. And if it detects a wall, then it gradually zooms in so that it doesn't hit the wall. And I do the same thing for ceilings. So if the player is underneath the ceiling, it detects that and it zooms in to the height of the ceiling so that if you swing up, then the camera won't hit the ceiling. Now in adjusting the inward and outward position of the camera based on the camera angle, I also do the same thing for the field of view. So normally the field of view doesn't really change as you play. Some games, like racing games, they do it to make a greater sense of speed. For platformers, it's not as common to change it. But what I'm doing is if the camera is pointed downwards, I lower the field of view, and if it's pointed upwards, I raise the field of view. So if you angle the camera downwards, then you're looking at the player from a top-down view. It makes things look flatter, and then if you angle the camera up towards the sky, you get more peripheral view, and things look bigger. And I don't do it a lot, I don't change the field of view a lot. I'm just making minor adjustments to make it feel a little more dynamic, a little more reactive to what you're doing. Now all of these things are happening automatically, but What's most important is player intention. So if the player decides they want to move the camera towards an obstacle, my obstacle avoidance system will turn off because I don't want to fight the player on their intention. The gradual zoom in of the camera will still be intact uh, just to avoid the obstacle, but I will let them swing towards the obstacle. And that system stays shut off until the player decides to move again. Then it turns back on and it automatically avoids things again. So that's my camera system right now. It's uh, definitely not perfect. There's still some wonky things that happen every once in a while, but I also think it's far better than not having the system. It just feels more fluid. Let me know what you think. Do you think the old one's better? Do you think the new one's better? Do you think there are different parts that are better than others? Is there any part of this that you don't like and you think I should get rid of? Let me know in the comments. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can subscribe to the channel. If you want to be a part of the community, I have a Discord. You can give more direct feedback to me there. And if you really want to help me out, you can go to my Steam page and you can wishlist the game. The link to that is in the description as well. Thanks.